Hello, good morning, Alessandra here. So today I would like to share with you something very special. As you can see, I'm trying to let you see a little bit of my <laughs> chaotic uh, library. And uh, as a book lover, as a writer, I would like uh, to let you have a tour of uh, my personal library, the library I grew up with, the library I built year by year since I was six years old, and as well old books uh, that my dad and my grandfather buy for me uh, to increase my knowledge and my culture. So with the excuse to give you a little bit of book suggestion uh, and uh, nice books that you can enjoy, I can show you as well a little bit of myself because any single book that I have read in my life it actually makes me the person that I am today, the writer that I want to be uh, and show a little bit as well of the things that I love, my passion, you know, you will see uh, as you can see, National Geographic magazine, music magazine, and literature of any kind. So let's have a tour. So with excuse, I can suggest you some nice title to enjoy. Yeah, sorry about the mess, but I'm not living here anymore. And half of this library is in England with me where I'm actually living right now. But maybe you will find it interesting. Who knows? Let's start. All right, let's start from the first section. As you can see, is the music section. And I built it when I was very young, like 13, 14, uh, buying all these books, especially as you can see about Beatles. Oh, yeah, Beatles. Uh, you know, when you start to do the first little jobs, babysitter, I was uh, even helping my uncle uh, in his uh, pizzeria. And with the money that I was earning, I was buying all these wonderful, wonderful books that came give me a lot of knowledge about Beatles which I was obsessed uh, yeah I, we have as well oh I suggest you this this is a motory crew the dirt uh, is the biography uh, quite quite strong biography very straightforward even this one heroin diaries by Nikki six uh, any motory crew fan knows that uh, Nikki died actually for a couple of minutes of uh, uh, overdose of heroin and then come back and he's he tell his history then we have Queen and Pooh, which is my favorite Italian uh, band. And the highlight of this section is this book. So as I said, this book uh, is called Summer of Love, The Making of Sgt. Pepper, and it's written from George Martin, the producer. It's quite a nice book to read, even if you are not a Beatles fan, as uh, is the point of view of the producer. You know, I give you a lot of uh, anecdotes about uh, the members of Beatles and is a journey through uh, the realization of the much more famous, you know, album. The album will really make the history in the West culture music. So I really suggest you this book. It's a wonderful, wonderful journey through the Brit culture. Another section that I have to uh, share with you is the section of my music and uh, cinema magazine because you need to understand guys you know i was a teenager uh, around the 2000 you know and uh, still uh, regardless you were having mtv and other program on the tv that could give you some knowledge and news about bands and rock stars and movies coming out. We didn't have so much internet, we didn't have Android, we didn't have tablets. Um, there was no Google or nice website at the time. So if you wanted to know something about bands, you needed to buy a magazine. And this one was one of my favorite. It was called Tutto. And uh, as you can see, Oasis, <laughs> one of my favorite bands at the time. And really, if you wanted to know something about your favorite bands and artists, you need to buy a magazine. And I keep in them, you know, like a little treasure. All right, in this section, we are going a little bit back forward. I mean, we were talking about my teenage years, but with this section, regardless, as you can see, the name are quite big. Uh, this is represent my childhood. Yes, indeed. I grew up uh, in a family who was obsessed from literature and books. So since I was very, very young, they put in my hands all these great names. And here there are my favorite 
uh, my favorite writer of, let's say, normal literature, because about fantasy is Tolkien, but about literature, English especially, is Oscar Wilde. I was obsessed from him, as you can see, I have all his uh, books. Of course, the most important, as I said, they are in London with me. But another artist, another um, writer that I love was Jane Austen. This book is actually very, very, very old. Pride and Prejudice from Jane Austen. When I take this book in my hands, I was just seven years old. Uh, probably that's why I have a problem with relationships, you know. <laughs> I have an idea, a little bit old of love. And anyway, it's quite old because this belongs to the collection of my grandma and uh, i guess that she buy this book as you can see it's very old maybe in the 50s 60s i don't know but uh, uh, for any romantic uh, you know lover like me you should read pride and prejudice it's it's very nice then we, here we have Hemingway, which i love a lot as well and here we have tolstoy uh, war and peace these uh, uh, big books are actually coming from a collection that I buy when I celebrate my 18th uh, uh, birthday. I remember my schoolmates, uh, friends, they didn't know uh, what they want to, uh, you know, what they should buy for me as a gift. And I told them, you know, don't waste your time, don't waste money. Uh, if you want, just put all the money together, which they did. And I, uh, they give me this check, you know, this this kind of, uh, um, you know, card, gift card. And I've been at the library and I spent, I guess, the 500 euro there at the library. I have even here other books from there. Sorry, the mess. I'm going to show you a little bit more about this collection. All right. This section tells you who I am. <laughs> A modern philosophy. And this is my favorite book behind behind there are all the books that I was studying at the university which I keep them like a little treasure and this is my favorite one I spend so much money because look at that look how much is big there is all all the writing from Platone so here you have all the knowledge of Socrates Platone is like a bible a bible of philosophy and I'm so addicted with the Greek philosophy even because you know Sicily has been uh, uh, dominated from Greek culture from uh, so many years uh, we can really say that actually Sicily and Sicilian people have roots on Greek culture more than Romans so for me knowing the root of my own blood was so important and this is definitely one of my favorite one and it took me so long to read it look how big it is and little alessandra oh my god that was so cute long time ago long time ago here we have another books that i love from the french writer dumas which is uh, the author of The Three Musketeers and um, A Count of Monte Cristo. This is a must read, guys. You really need. Then we have uh, Cesare Pavese and a lot of uh, uh, Catholic books from the pop, as I consider them a lot uh, philosopher, and I'm obsessed with philosophy. So I like to read as well Catholic books, as um, my constant battle is between faith and reason, reason and faith. So as I read uh, about Platone and Socrates and Aristotle, I love as well to read about uh, Catholic point of view. Here we have as well a mix of literature, actually, many, many different names all messed up, more Oscar Wilde. And uh, highlights as well of this wonderful, wonderful book, you sh should really see The Last of Moicans. Uh, you know, they made even the movie. There is a very famous movie. And uh, this is an habit that I have. When I discover, when I watch a movie and I discover that there is a book, I actually love to go, to run and read the book because uh, through reading the book, you really can... Um, discover uh, which is the point of view of the writer the message that he want to give better than uh, you know that uh, uh, than the movie because the movie is actually already uh, 
a product ready, uh, you know, from the director. But with this, with the book, you are the director, you know, you build the story, uh, you build the faces, you know, you draw uh, any character in your mind is a uh, an active process reading a book. Uh, I love to watch movies, but movies, as I said, are final, final product. So uh, if you like uh, uh, this uh, uh, movie, The Last of Moicans, please read the book because it's so much better, I can assure you. Oh my God. Another highlight, actually, is my favorite contemporary writer, which is Paolo Coelho. This is the only book that we have here, actually, because all the others are with me in London. I really love Paolo Coelho. Uh, I call it uh, the, the alchemist of this generation, the philosophy of this generation, philosopher. And uh, his uh, knowledge is why uh, wiseness is uh, so priceless for me, you know. You should read this as well, Letter of Love from the Prophet. It's just, uh, Paolo Coelho is... Uh, is the one that you need to read in this generation, really. I suggest you all his book, especially The Alchemist. Especially The Alchemist, guys. Read it, must read. And here we have my personal collection of National Geographic magazine. When I started to collect them, I was just 13 years old. You know, I grew up in a generation with no computer, um, no uh, sky or, you know, documentary channel. And uh, this was a nice gift from my dad because he knew that I was uh, uh, in love, you know, with uh, documentary and archaeology and photography and uh, the galaxy and all this stuff and he, he basically made for me uh, you know this this collection I was receiving uh, through the post every month and I have a very nice anecdote about that because the first magazine that arrived through the post uh, my dad delivered to me by himself and he said this is my gift for you but inside there was uh, my first concert ticket <laughs> and it was um, a live concert from Pooh uh, which is an Italian uh, uh, band that was very famous in the 70s 80s and uh, is a band uh, that is very very bond to my family because my own name is coming from this band which they write a song that is called Alessandra and because this song is tell the history of my parents they uh, you know uh, they passed me the love from this band and I remember it was inside of this inside of this magazine I opened and it was the uh, ticket for the concert and I was just 12 years old nice memories this is my spot about the Italian literature my personal one and uh, we have Shasha, we have uh, Verga, we have a Pirandello, there is even uh, something else. But basically, these are my favorite artists uh, and writers, as they are CCN as well, especially Pirandello and Verga. But about this section, the highlights, he's uh, to Gabriele D'Annunzio, Il Piacere, The Pleasure. He's uh, considered our Italian dandy, so being, of course, a lover and uh, appreciate a lot uh, the um, uh, job of uh, Oscar Wilde, of course, I found as well in my own culture, the dandy, uh, you know, this kind of uh, particular literature um, uh, that was very famous in the 800. So Il Piacere is my highlight about this section about Italian literature. And I don't know why he's here, but he's actually here. My dad is doing a mess with this library. Uh, he's a Dracula from Bram Stoker. You know, this book, oh Jesus, uh, this book is really frightening me a lot. It's very creepy. Is uh, I can see really a horror uh, book. Is uh, the story of the much more fav famous vampire, <laughs> vampire of the history. And when I read it, I was uh, 13 years old and it scared me to death.
I'd keep on talking about a philosopher. This is my personal collection, actually built it from my dad. He's buying for me all this book uh, to increase my knowledge. But of course, I cannot take them with me in London because, because there are so many. I don't suggest you nothing from this because if you don't love this kind of stuff, it will be very, very tough to read. So it's just to show you, you know, my passion. And even my dad, you know, he's obsessed with archaeology and fossil and stuff like that. Look. Look what is here. Look, obsession. We are a family obsessed. Okay, this is has actually nothing to do with my library, but you know, I was looking at this stuff and this is actually Bonadonna family soul fantasy and science, science and fantasy. So this one belongs to my dad, which passes, you know, the love for the universe and the galaxy and the science and the NASA stuff. And this is uh, it buy for us as well. Uh, these are some fairies that uh, we buy in England. The first time that I've been in England has a memory and uh, uh, to mark and underline our love for fantasy, fantasy universe. And here we go. Of course, we cannot skip and miss our lovely gentleman, Mr. J.R.R. Tolkien, king of any fantasy writer, source of inspiration and wiseness for anybody in life, you know, in any field, in any moment. That is the book, I guess, that I read most in my life and is really inspired me in any single situation that I live. You know, I really relate it a lot. And uh, it's very tough actually to read because it's written, you know, with this kind of uh, uh, very professional Oxford University style from Tolkien, but uh, you know, it's a must read. You really need the Lord of the Rings. You need to read guys. Okay, promise me. And I'm going to end up this uh, video and uh, thank you from the deep of my heart just to watch it if you reach this point with no two books, but these are actually two final exam from my uh, grandfather, the dad of my mom. I grew up with him exactly in this out that he built for all of us and uh, he got graduated, as you can see, 87, 88. I was already born in 1991. He got graduated in literature and uh, medicine when he was uh, uh, 82 and 84 years old. This is uh, absolutely wonderful, don't you think? University of the Third Age. This gentleman inspired me uh, like nobody else in my life. I was uh, such a little girl and I knew how hard... Uh, he worked all his life. He fought the war. He was um, working, you know, as a, on the on on the train. He was riding the train all his life, and after that, he dedicated himself uh, to studying and to the knowledge, to increase his knowledge. And he went at university when he was an older man. So. My granddad, I hope today it will be the inspiration for all of you to understand that everything is possible at any age of your life if you truly believe it. You need to believe it. Uh, you are not late. You are still in time to realize your dreams. Doesn't matter, even if you are almost at the end of your life. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I love you with all my heart.